Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to 3D Now. My name is Jack and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make an Octoprint server so you can 3D print from anywhere in the world. So hopping right into the video, Octopi and Octoprint is a software that you put on a Raspberry Pi and connect it to your 3D printer so your printer has its own server and you can check your prints, view the progression of your prints, see a live feed, make time lapses, even slice models from anywhere in the world on your phone, on your computer. It's really, really awesome. So this is a full tutorial on how to set up Octoprint, all the materials you're going to need, how to set up a domain name, and how to view your prints from anywhere in the world and on your phone. So I'm going to try to make this video as short as possible, but also give you the most in-depth tutorial and I don't want to make it a half hour long video. So feel free to pause and play whenever you want so you can follow along. So of course, the first thing you're going to need to make an Octoprint server is of course a Raspberry Pi. Now the one I have is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, which is the newest one. And of course, it's going to be a little bit faster, but you can use any recent Raspberry Pi that has USB ports, Wi-Fi, stuff like that. Also, you're going to need a USB webcam or a Raspberry Pi webcam that attaches to the Raspberry Pi's board itself. In addition, you're going to need a micro SD card to put the operating system on and put into your Raspberry Pi. Also, a micro USB power plug to feed power into the Raspberry Pi. I use a USB Wi-Fi card and of course your 3D printer and the USB cable that connects to your 3D printer. So you're going to need to print some parts from your 3D printer that I'll show you on screen right now. And that's a case to hold the Raspberry Pi. I have a CR10, so I found a little Raspberry Pi case that clips onto my CR10, which is awesome. And also a stand to hold the USB camera on the bed. So print those out to hold your Raspberry Pi and camera in. And once that is done, grab your micro SD card, plug it into your computer and head over to octoprint.org. And you're going to want to download the latest octopi image file and this has the operating system of the whole server so once you have downloaded that zip file make sure to extract it and find the image file and remember where that is next you're going to have to download a few more pieces of software first is win32 disk imager you can find that online so this writes the image file to your micro sd card so you're going to want to open up win32 disk imager select your micro sd card and also open up the finder and find your image file for Octopi. And you're going to want to write that, click write to the micro SD card. And once that is finished, you're going to want to go into your finder again and open up the boot drive, which is now your micro SD card and has all the Octopi folders and files in it. So you want to edit the Wi-Fi connection settings by opening the octopi-network.txt in the root of the SD card. So don't open this up using Notepad, either Notepad++ or sometimes WordPad works because some editors mess up the whole format of the file and then it will not work after that. Scroll down until you see WPA slash WPA2 or whatever security settings you have on your router. And you're going to want to uncomment the two lines that have the password and username by just taking out the hashtag and put in your info with your Wi-Fi's name and your Wi-Fi's password. And when, once you're done with that, you're gonna wanna save the file and plug the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi. Then I plugged in my Wi-Fi adapter, plugged in the printer and webcam, and plugged in the micro USB power cord. And the green light should start flashing on the Raspberry Pi and, and in the blue light on my Wi-Fi adapter card. So on my Raspberry Pi, I used the built-in Wi-Fi at first, but it didn't work after a few hours, so I plugged in my USB Wi-Fi adapter, and that worked perfectly. So once the Raspberry Pi has been turned on, you're going to want to head back over to your computer again and log into your router, or download this piece of software, IP Scanner. If you log into your router, and you can find the connected device called octopi.local, or if you scan your network with the, with the scanner, it should be called octopi.local, and remember the IP address of the Pi. On my network, I have Xfinity, so it's 10.0.0.number, or if you have another internet service provider, it should be something like 192.168.1.something, or something like that. It should be a short IP address, and that's the address of your Raspberry Pi. So, 
Next, you're gonna to wanna to install another piece of software, an SSH client called Putty. You can find that online. And this, and this allows you to connect to your Raspberry Pi server from your computer. So open up Putty and connect to the Pi through SSH by typing in the Pi's IP address. And this is the short number that you found in the step before. So log in with the default username, which is PI Pi, and the password, which is Raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. And this should log you in to the console of the Octoprint. And if SSH is not working, you have to connect your Raspberry Pi to an HDMI monitor and complete the next steps this way, because sometimes SSH isn't turned on in Octoprint, but it should work through SSH most of the time. So once you're at the console in your, in your, in your Octoprint server on the Raspberry Pi, you're gonna type in the command sudo space raspy dash config, then click enter, and a settings page should come up. So the first thing to do is expand the storage on the Raspberry Pi by allowing it to use the whole space on your micro SD card. So you can go into expand file system and that should expand the whole file system. It should give you a confirmation for that. And next you want to change your default password on the Raspberry Pi. So anybody can't just log into Raspberry Pi and change whatever they want. So just click change password and it should prompt you to add a new password. And if SSH didn't work in the first step, you can go to advanced options and then enable SSH from here, and then it should work after this. Next, go into advanced options and click on host name. You can change this to your printer's name. So I changed mine to CR10, which is my printer name. And this will now show up as the host name in the network. So instead of being called octopi.local, mine's gonna be called cr10.local. I changed the host name of it. So now click restart and your Pi should restart with all the new settings installed. And once that's done, go over to your computer and either type in the IP address that I just found or your host name. And the Octopi server should come up with the first time setup menu and go through all the settings and make sure you add a password to the, to the Octoprint server if you wanna use it outside your home network from your phone or through a domain name and then and go through and, and change all the settings to match your 3D printer. And once that's done, you're gonna to wanna to go over to the control tab in Octoprint and see if the webcam is working. If it is, that's awesome. And if it's not, it, you're gonna to have to go back into the SD card and change some settings in the octopi.txt file. And that's a little bit more complicated. So right now you pretty much have a fully working Octoprint server. So right now on your home network, you can print from it. You can see live prints. You can check the stats of your printer. You can heat it up, turn the fans on. You can even move all the axes from your browser. It's absolutely awesome. But if you wanna be able to use it from outside your network or on your phone, you're gonna to need to port forward. Head back to your router's webpage and this has to be done through your router. I'm gonna port forwarding. This might be in an advanced folder in some, in some routers, but make sure it says, port forwarding menu and then click a new port forward and put in your Raspberry Pi's IP address and then change it to port 80. This is for web servers. So make sure you put in your Raspberry Pi's IP address and then port 80 and click save. And what this means is that your Raspberry Pi's IP address can now be funneled through your router into the internet itself. So now instead of using the IP address of your Raspberry Pi on your local network, you need to find the IP address of your router to get from the whole internet to your router and then your router will funnel you into the Raspberry Pi's IP address. So to find your public IP address or the IP of your router, you can just Google what's my IP and go to what's my IP.org. And remember that long, that long public IP address that's at the top of the webpage. And that is the number that you wanna go to if you wanna access your Octoprint server from outside of your home network. Inside your network, you can still use the smaller IP address that we found, but outside you have to use this longer public IP address. Now you should be careful because anybody can go and see your Octoprint server. So be extremely careful when giving out your public IP address. And this is why I said you should set up a new username and password to log into your Octopi server because anybody can go to your public IP address and see the Octoprint server but they can't actually do anything unless they sign in and log in. So only you have that information. If you don't wanna 
remember this long set of numbers, you can add a domain name to your server. So instead of being 12.34.5.6, it's going to be, say, 3dnow.com. That's what a domain name is. But of course, some domain names you have to pay for, but I'll show you how to get a free domain name. And it's going to be instead of .com or .net, it's going to be a .ddns.net. If you want to get a domain name and connect it to your Octoprint server, you can go over to noip.com. That's the website I use and type in your name or your server name, whatever name you want to use for your Octoprint server. And then I changed mine to .ddns.net and then click sign up and you can make a free account. And then you have a free domain name to connect to your Octoprint server. So once you're logged in, you can go over to your host names, click on modify under your new free domain name and then add your public IP address. This is the long address that points toward your router. And once that's done, click save and it should take a little bit, but after an hour or two, you can go to your, your domain name from outside of the network and it should point to your Raspberry Pi server, which is absolutely awesome. Now, finally, if you want to control and check your printer from your phone, you're going to want to use an app called Printoid, specifically Printoid Pro. There is a Printoid Lite, which is free, but I highly, highly recommend Printoid Pro, which has so many more features. So you can download that from the App Store. And then the first time you boot it up, you're going to want to follow all the directions to type in your public IP address, your local IP address for the Pi, your printer name, and the API key, which is found in the Octoprint settings on the website. And you can scan that with your phone. It should sync up onto your phone. And now you can access print and see your printer from anywhere in the world, from your phone, domain name on the internet, and you, you can see, check your 3D printer anywhere in the world with an Octoprint server. It's absolutely awesome and totally worth it. Also, all the links for websites and products will be in the description below if you want to use them. And if you guys have any questions about anything throughout the process, be sure to comment down below. I will answer every single one of them. So thanks again for watching, guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more 3D printing videos like this. Comment down below if you have any questions. And I'll see you guys in the next video.